Opposition senators react to the delayed debate on the NPO bill. Bishop Simeon Hall disagrees with the Prime Minister who said the fear of crime is down. News is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Jared Higgs. Stopping news tonight. Following a recent strike by consultant physicians, their junior counterparts voted to strike today. According to Labor Director John Pinder, 207 doctors voted yes, while one voted no. The strike vote is in relation to the public hospital's authority's failure to pay doctors double time on holidays, which they say they are entitled to. It's a fight that they've been battling since 2012 and was the subject of a trade dispute file with the Department of Labor. Doctors Union President Dr. Millicent Bassett says the PHA previously agreed to pay double time on holidays. However, she says they reneged on that agreement. Bassett added that while interruption of services is not the union's preferred method, if they aren't dealt with sensibly and logically, then they will have to step out. Moving on, the debate and passage of the Non-Profit Organizations Bill 2018 has been pushed back to mid-January 2019. The delay, which was announced in the Senate today, comes amid strong pushback from civil society and the religious community. Following today's proceedings, opposition senators lashed out at the government for what they said was a rushed and shambolic bill that proved the Minnesota administration did not do its homework. Jasmine Brown tells us more. Those opposition senators say they were not surprised by what happened this morning as they insisted that the bill was nothing but rushed in the first place. When they come and they bring proposals to us, just get your ducks in a row and don't come with the shambolic performance where you obviously, you know, are here, there and everywhere. That was Leader of Opposition Business in the Senate, Fred Mitchell, reacting just moments after the Attorney General made the announcement in the Senate, telling senators that the matter would be dealt with when the Senate resumes on January 17th. You do attend um, after uh, we have had the chance to uh, inform and discuss at the cabinet table and obtain the requisite approvals um, a series of you know, short amendments that will capture most of the concerns of civil society and of the church as well. Uh, the idea is to make the bill more user friendly and to reduce some of the bureaucracy, um, which, bearing in mind the age of bureaucracy in the past, could amount to real impediments. Bethel declined to comment on the delay afterwards, saying he said all he intended to on the matter. But the AG was much more forthcoming on Sunday when he confirmed to the Nassau Guardian that the government had decided to delay the NPO bill's passage. His comments came after Civil Society Bahamas released a press statement on Sunday afternoon indicating that it had met with the AG on Saturday. In its statement, CSB claimed Bethel said he intended to revise and rescale the NPO bill to more moderate regulation of the sector in order to comply with FATF. In response to that statement, Bethel accused CSB of divulging confidential information and said the group is trying to force the government's hand. He said, I'm disappointed that civil society organizations would adopt the kind of posture that is evident by this press statement. A commitment to review is not a commitment to do, yet to put into the public domain our confidential and private discussions in this way seems to be an attempt to try to force the government's hand. That is not an acceptable way to have a civil discussion. Meantime, those opposition senators say they are disappointed with the government for wasting valuable time on a bill that they say was clearly not fit for debate, given the vast pushback and claims of a lack of proper consultation. The government was unprepared. You know, and so there's this rush, 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 rush. This all has to be done. Remember, it was supposed to be done by the 31st of yeah. December. Absolutely. It had to be done because of anti-terrorism, mm -hmm. FATFs, yeah. all this alphabet soup that they had. Right? And it turns out that it doesn't have to be done at all. The bill was passed in the House of Assembly on December 5th. However, Bethel announced in the Senate last Monday that passage on the bill would be delayed until today to allow for further consultation. Mitchell said even if the government had intended to proceed, the opposition planned on voting no. This bill is a prime example of that. Now, clearly, 
they did not do their homework with regard to this bill. Because if they had done their homework, the bill would not have been brought to the Senate, to the point of the Senate, and then you have to make what appears to be significant changes to the bill. The Progressive Liberal Party was going to vote against this bill. We were going to offer a single amendment, and that amendment would have been to the definition section in the bill. And the amendment would exclude political parties and the church from this bill. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Thanks, Jasmine. The first two subdivisions in Government Service Lots Initiative are fully subscribed. That's according to Environment and Housing Minister Romal Ferreira, who says the 20 lots available in the Sunset Close Subdivision Extension and the Lionel Davis Estates have all been snapped up. First, we had Sunset Close Edition. That's been fully subscribed. And then we had, we're in the process of developing Roma Street, uh, Lionel Davis. And that also has, uh, for the most part, fully subscribed. So now we're working on Carmichael Village, which we had to reconfigure. And we reconfigured it and we got 380 uh, lots in there. And th that's actively being subscribed. Back in August, Ferreira stated that only 15% of applicants qualified for government service lots initiative due to predatory lending practices. The housing minister blasted commercial banks for seducing Bahamians into loans that he says aren't necessary, in particular those who can have salary deduction. He also revealed the government was no longer building homes due to poor workmanship and long-lasting obligations on government to make repairs on homes it built. He says the bulk of government's duties are related to infrastructure and it's difficult to say when the more than 350 lots in Carmichael Village will be ready and how many people will actually qualify to build on them. It's, it's difficult to say. We have to install the infrastructure. And uh, what does that mean? That means that we have to put in the, the road, the electricity, uh, develop the plot plans, the plat plans, and, and that sort of thing. Once that happens, uh, we go through the tenders process, etc. Get subdivision approval, which is also very important, then we should be able to roll that out. Uh, so we, we're hoping that we can do that as soon as they, we get the final approvals from the Ministry of Works. A former Christian Council president isn't sharing the Prime Minister's sentiments that the fear of crime in the country is down. In fact, Bishop Simeon Hall says more severe measures need to be taken to deal with the issue. Gillian Gray has more. In the wake of several armed robberies and shooting incidents within the last week, Bishop Simeon Hall is calling for draconian measures to be enacted to deal with the crime problem. Maybe we need to look at our constitution, maybe we need to look at our laws to see if the police could take more draconian measures against known criminals in our society. Uh, 80 odd deaths, it might be lower than last year, but there's still plenty people. In the last few weeks, there has been a string of murders that raised the murder count to 86. On Saturday, a woman was robbed and sexually assaulted in her home, and hours later, three men were shot in Ridgeland Park, causing the death of one of the men. These incidents follow last week's armed robbery and shooting incident at a local grocery store which claimed the life of Mario Cartwright, a father of three who was entering the store as the gunman exited. And just a week prior, the country was shaken from the news of two double murders just 24 hours apart. In the wake of these incidents, Bishop Hall outlined just what he thinks should happen. We cannot engage in what I call the paralysis of wishful thinking. Uh, we have to be real and we have to send the strongest message to the criminal element in our country. Number one, I think we should double the penalty for the possession of illegal guns. Bishop Hall, an advocate for gun amnesty, said he sympathizes with the families affected by murders. He added that the issue of crime must be depoliticized, claiming that for far too long political parties while in opposition seem to have the answers but fail to bring them once elected. A, a bipartisan approach, non-political approach where political parties, church leaders could sit and at the end of the day come up with a strong message uh, capital punishment, we could debate it. It's difficult to be philosophical about capital punishment when people are getting shot down by the two and three at the same time. Earlier in the year, the Prime Minister renewed his support for hangings, and in the wake of statistics showing the downward trend of crime, Dr. Minnis said the fear of crime is down as well. Bishop Hall said he does not think one correlates with the other. The difference between statistical reduction and the fear of crime 
for me, are two different things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, the, the reduction in crime, again I say, the police, the, the, the Minister of National Security are both to be commended. They and their teams are to be commended. But the fear of crime that I see is still prevalent in our society. And it's no use joking about it or playing politics about it or wishing that it, it were different. The reality is it's so. Reporting for our News, I'm Gillian Gray. A young Bahamian photographer is making waves internationally, and he's doing it all with just his camera and a bit of diving gear. Tonight, our Kyle Joaquin gets a one-on-one -on -one lesson in underwater photography from Andre Musgrove. At the age of 21, Andre Musgrove has done it all. From swimming with sharks to features with some of the world's biggest nature explorers like National Geographic, and he's done it all under the sea. And he's only been in the underwater photography game for three years. Today, he took a minute to show us how he does it, and to make it a bit simpler, he's using a Samsung cell phone. Yeah, so today I'll be shooting with the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 in the pool. Um, used to being in the ocean, of course, um, with a different rig, uh, a lot more going on basically. But this is a new experience that I'm happy to try. Okay, the concept would be um, someone's going to be punching the surface of the water and she's going to be on the underside, underwater of course. Um, looking up at the fish coming directly into her face and not blinking. And you're going to do all of this with a cell phone? Yeah, with the cell phone. The true sport that she is, our model braved through the cold water to make it happen. So I'm going to be kneeling down on the water, um, looking up with my eyes open. I'm going to do my best. <laughs> and someone's going to be punching the water and I'm going to be looking up at the fist. The water's cold? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd be punching the water like that and then wait for the surface to calm down, punch it again. Wait for the surface to come down, punch it again. Um, when you come, and also when you come up, Aaron, come that way, just in case she's punching before you come up. Now it took us a few takes. <laughs> but eventually, we got it. Just touch the home screen. Do it like you normally you normally would on the Samsung. Oh, so touch the home screen. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's working. How many shots did you take to begin with? Um, I didn't check, but it was about 500 shots. <laughs> but you did that within like 10 minutes? Yeah. In most of his work, you'd notice Andre is underwater with a lot of sharp toothed animals. And surprisingly, he doesn't get scared. I'm not afraid when I'm down there, basically. I'm actually more peaceful because it's what I, it's the thing that I'll, me, that's the thing that I go there for, basically, to see. So when they're not there, I'm a little bit more sad, but when they're there, I'm... So happy. you want to see the sharks? Yeah, of course. Uh-huh. <laughs> and just to prove how good this 21-year-old really is, take a look at the finished product. For Our News, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Chill to come on Our News. The Ministry of Health warns against the consumption of a specific canned corn product. And the former Minister of Grand Bahama reacts to a delay in the sale of the Grand Lucayan Resort. That's coming up when our news returns.